Oh, Casper there. He's rear end. It's a deal. He's coming into the blades of glory. But he puts himself in the most vulnerable position possible for a Farah. And no resurrect here. Verbo looks like he has a Valkyrie. There it is. It's coming in. But now Casper oh. wants to get rid of him. Swats him aside. A deal. Oh. gets taken down. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. This week in the Overwatch League, the Boston Uprising have continued their unstoppable climb up the standings. The London Spitfire crushes the Soul Dynasty, and we take a look at some predictions for next week's Stage 1 title matches. Plus, all the latest news, signings, and the best highlights of the past week. Despite losing Jake, that may be enough. Oh, okay! okay. And then Fleta shows up, and Fleta destroys everybody! That's four! Four for Fleta! Insanity! They are the real deal. All this stuff pre-season about them coming last. We all did it. I did it. I put it in my power rankings. We were wrong. People need to wake up now and realize that these guys are out here and they're hungry. After being widely rated as the worst team in the league and having a slow start in the first couple of weeks, the Boston Uprising are now on a four game winning streak, which started last week when they got the better of Dallas Fuel and then handed the London Spitfires their only loss so far. However, their performances got even better this week as they defeated both of the Los Angeles teams without dropping a single map. Looking up here for the Boston Uprising as they do manage to get the cleanup. I remix out of the fight. Striker, they are taking over now, Boston. Dream Casper going to work in the back line. They first went up against the Gladiators, who the desk and casters predicted a close game with. But Boston came out swinging and dominated their way to their first 4 0 victory of the week. But they were far from finished and set their sights on the next of the two LA teams, the Valiant. World. The self destruct is more of a desperation one, and he's not even going to be able to get the remake. Bishu gets picked off, and Striker just styling right now. Takes down Sure 4. They do have that point defense. This is how you want to play it, but as I say, that Striker again with the false bomb takes down I Remix. Once again, the desk favoured the Valiant, and the crowd clearly wanted the LA team to get the win. But Boston looked even better than they did against the Gladiators and completely dismantled the Valiant over and over again, leaving the crowd shocked, confused, and silent as the hometown favourites were simply outplayed. Really just kind of run through this map quick. Well, you know they want it. Pulse Pop stuck towards Envy. He gets deep in that dream. Casper, it's his Wonderland. He's found a duel. He's in Verbo. He's got fate as well. That's a big haul for him. Where are the Los Angeles Valiant? Nowhere to be seen. Boston's rise up the standings really has been a rags to riches story, and they're now looking like one of the most coordinated and focused teams in the league. When the team was being put together, the players were chosen not just for being skilled individuals, but also being highly coachable. Boston wanted a team that would listen to the coaching staff, and although they had a slow start, they have now really gelled together and look better than many other teams that have been playing together for months. When we look at their players, it's Dream Casper who's getting the big plays and filling the highlight reels. His flexibility has been a huge boon to the team. Being able to play a mixture of projectile and hit scan heroes to a high level is something that many other pros don't do. Most of them choose to specialize in one type of DPS or another. He's one of the most interesting players to watch because 90% of the time he's this great top tier DPS player, but then 10% of the time he's almost untouchable as he pulls out these huge clutch plays just when his team needs them used their Valkyrie, but no one died during it. I mean, it's kind of not that tragic, but they didn't get the resurrections. Big Goose will fall to Dream Casper's blade. Dream Casper, a nightmare to deal with on the point. That is a team kill. Let's hear the horn. Then the other half of this DPS duo is Striker, who tends to go a little bit more unnoticed, but is actually playing a deadly Tracer and Widowmaker. And it's not just the kills that he's getting, but also his positioning, which is outstanding, as he constantly works to isolate supports where they can be easily picked off. Alerted the Mercy to his presence instead of going for the blink kill. He instead, he blinks the pulse bomb anyway. I'll get you later, Big Goose. So sick. Forces them back into the corner. He's playing them right now like a fine instrument. The rest of the team have also gelled together so incredibly well that it lets these DPS players do all this damage. Gamzu and notice the tanks continue to impress and are looking like one of the best tank duos in the game at the moment. We're not to be messed with, they're not to be underestimated, please practice for us, we're ready. If there is one team to watch when stage 2 starts, it's going to be the Uprising, as if they can continue to look this good, they are certainly in with a chance of competing in the title matches. Now, speaking of title matches, the Stage 1 title fights will be taking place at the end of next week, where the top three teams in the league will be competing for $125,000.
The number two and three seeds will face off first, and then the winner will get a shot at the number one seed for the title. And right now, it's still fairly open for that third place spot. The number one and two seeds will almost certainly be the London Spitfire or the New York Excel, as both these teams are at the top of the standings and will be playing each other next week, so one of them is guaranteed a win, putting them at at least eight wins, and they both have quite a large map win lead over Seoul. On paper, it looks like New York, London and Seoul will be the top three, but the Houston Outlaws do have a chance to upset the odds. They might be a match win behind Seoul, but they actually have a better map score. So if they can tie up that match difference, there is a chance that their higher map score could see them edge Seoul out of the top three. Now speaking of Seoul, we have to talk about what happened to them this week as they were crushed by the London Spitfire, who actually won their first three games without letting Seoul score a single point. London seemed to have really levelled up this week. They used 11 of their 12 players during the match and seemed to be the first team to have found a way to use subbing as an advantage rather than it being a potential liability. Now for whatever reason, Seoul didn't play with their team captain Rio J Hong, which might have made a difference, but London just steamrolled them so hard, I don't think it would have gotten them the win. London Spitfire, another 2-0, a 3-0 in the set, they will beat the Seoul Dynasty. Unlike last week when many of the games were nail-bitingly close, this week we saw a lot of decisive victories, so there really only is one contender for the match of the week, and that was Seoul Dynasty versus the Houston Outlaws. Although heavily rated as the top team in the league, Seoul have begun to struggle recently, and have lost to both New York and London, meaning they were going into this match really needing a win to keep themselves in the top three. Houston, on the other hand, have been looking great in the past couple weeks, but this week a key piece of the puzzle was missing, as their star hit scan player Linkser was out sick, leaving Clockwork to fill his shoes. I've been the archaeological expedition, I feel like, in this match, a search for the missing Linkser, and <laughs> they're not finding him right now. <laughs> right. All in all, Clockwork really did step up, and Houston held their own, taking an early lead with a win on the first map. However, in maps 2 and 3, Sol struck back. Dumba coming from on high, there's the self-destruct, and he's going to get Jake and the DMAC onto Cool Math. Soul Dynasty trying to put this one away, and they will. That's a 2-0 on the Ilios for them, and they have taken the lead in this series. I can't help but think that having Linksat as Widowmaker would have let them challenge Fletcher a little bit more, and that small change might have been enough to get them the win. But even without him, they still played a great game and pulled it back on the fourth map to force a tiebreaker. You can do it if you're 1v6. And I think, Monte Cristo, that we are going to map number five. Both teams fought incredibly hard on Li Jiang Tower, but in the end, it was the dynasty who managed to grind out the win. Uh, Moomin Jake go Crab. down, they couldn't Crab. afford that one. Here comes the repair, <laughs> right in the Graviton Surge. And that will be enough, I think, for Seoul Dynasty to barely pull this series out. That is it. They looked much better than they did against London earlier in the week, and with Rio J Hong back in the lineup, they looked a lot more focused. But I still can't help but think that if Linkser had been there for the Houston Outlaws to challenge Fletcher's Widowmaker a little bit more, things might have gone the other way. But still, huge credit to Clockwork for stepping up and really keeping them in the running. This week, the Florida Mayhem revealed their first signing to expand on their six-man roster, as they picked up the flex tank player Zappis. I've been playing uh, FPS games also since like 2000, but they were all a bit like casual level, and there was nothing serious about them. Actually, Overwatch was the first game that I thought about that going pro. It was a heaven's gift, like. This was the game that I've been waiting. Zappis is a great addition to the team, as he will bring a lot more unpredictability to the roster, as although he's most well known for his Zarya play, he's also been a primary DPS in the past, and has even played Anna and Zenyatta. But for the Mayhem, he will be primarily a flex tank, which could help out a lot, as some people are predicting that triple and quad tank could become very popular after the mercy changes are introduced at the start of stage two. And although while I'm working on this video nothing is official, there was also a rumour that Fact Fiction might have been picked up, as he recently posted on Twitter about heading to LA. Gaguri, who you might remember as the Korean Zarya player, who was so good she was accused of cheating by some other pros, has also reportedly accepted an offer from a foreign team. It's possible that she's joining an academy team in Contenders, but the timing of it happening during the signing window for the main league does present the possibility of her joining one of the league teams. If I was to hazard a complete guess, I would say probably the New York Excelsior, as the language barrier wouldn't be a problem. 
We'll keep you posted on any more signings and rumours next week, but for now, let's take a look back at all the action from the past week. On day one, both LA teams earned themselves some decisive wins, and the Houston Outlaws' streak of winning games 4-0 came to an end, but they still beat the Shock 3-1. On day two, Dallas played with the old Envy roster and got Taimu back in action, but even going back to the old lineup wasn't enough to stop the Fusion, who just outplayed them the whole series. Shadowburn in particular caused them no end of trouble. The other two games were also full sweeps, including the surprisingly easy win for London over Seoul. On day 3, the Shock defeated the Mayhem, and we had our match of the week between Seoul and Houston, as well as Boston dominating the Gladiators. On day 4, London didn't even let Shanghai score a single objective on any of the four maps, and this, combined with Dallas winning one map against New York, was enough to put London on top of the leaderboard for the first time in the season. Then everything came to a close, with Boston's second 4-0 sweep of the week. So as the week wraps up, it's the Spitfire at the top, with a one-map lead over New York. Seoul are just behind them as all three teams set their sights on the Stage 1 title matches at the end of next week. However, as we mentioned, the Houston Outlaws are close behind, and they do have that map win lead over Seoul that could see them nudge out the Koreans if they manage to tie up the match wins. Looking forward to next week, the Dallas Fuel look to get their second win as they take on the Shanghai Dragons. Any hopes for the Seoul Dynasty of being pushed out of the top three rest heavily on the Valiant shoulders on the first day, and then on day two, the Fusion and the Uprising will also be battling to stay in the top of the leaderboard, while the Houston Outlaws will be looking for the upset against London, an important match for both teams to win. If the Valiant beat Seoul on the first day, they'll be looking to beat Shanghai with four straight wins to help increase their map score, while Seoul will be looking for a similar result against the Shock. On day four, New York and London battle it out for what will almost certainly be the decider for first place. Houston vs Boston will also be an exciting game with both teams having had dominant performances in the second half of this stage of the league. Then on Sunday we have the title matches, but who do you think will be in them? Any other predictions for next week? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, this is James Lucas saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.